So a lot of people have been asking me lately, Mike, how do you start a vending business? Well, I'm about to answer that right now. Before we get started with the video, I want to ask everyone to share this video with at least one person who you know that may need some extra income. Can see clearly now the rain is gone. So first of all, you need to create a game plan. You want to ask yourself, what type of machines do you want to start with? And usually the next question that follows is, where can I find a vending machine? You can usually always find some pretty good deals on Craigslist. All you really have to do is type in Craigslist, your city, and vending machines for sale. So what I do is Craigslist Ocala, vending machines for sale. And usually I get some pretty good options. If you happen to try Craigslist in your area and don't come up with anything, next you can try Facebook Marketplace pages. And there are always a lot of local ones. Some other sites you can also check out are LetGo, OfferUp, eBay, Amazon, and there's probably a few other sites that you could check out to figure out what you want to get. Now, if you'd like to see a more in-depth video on how I find vending machines online, I'm going to leave a link right up here. Make sure you hit that link and go check out that video if you'd like to find out how to get your own machines. And I know a lot of you are probably asking, well, which one do I get first, Mike? The vending machine or the location? Honestly, it doesn't really matter, but me personally, I like to get the machine first. There's a few different ways that you can go about this process of finding your machines. You can either buy the machine and place it yourself Yourself. You can buy the machine and get someone who is called a locator. You can pay this locator to find a location for you, or you can buy a route that has already been established from someone else who is selling their route. Once you have found your machines and you've decided which game plan you're going to go with, make sure you check your machines carefully before you buy a machine from anybody. Usually people aren't selling brand new, perfectly working machines. So if you'd like a few ideas on what to check for, I'm going to leave another link right here. Make sure you go check out that video. The next question usually is, what are the legal things that I have to worry about and how do I legitimize my business? Once you've come up with a business name for yourself, you're going to want to check to see if that name is already taken. Once you've come up with a name, the next step is you're going to want to either get incorporated with a corporation or an LLC. An LLC is a limited liability company and it's set up to protect you, the business owner, from being sued for all your personal assets. Let's say, for instance, someone's product gets stuck in the machine and they decide to shake the machine to try to get their product out. And while shaking the machine, the machine falls on them and injures them or worse. I'm going to randomly select one of your vending machines to see if it can be rocked using human strength enough to tip and crush me. Now in the US each year, six people die this way and five of them are insurance appraisers. So I take this very seriously. Let's say for instance, someone choked on a gumball or had a peanut allergy and decided to try to sue you for it. Instead of being able to sue you, the individual, they will only be able to sue your company, which is set up under the LLC. And this can protect you from losing everything you worked so hard for to earn. The sewer would only be able to go after whatever money you have tied up in your business and wouldn't be able to go after or try to sue you for your personal assets. Once you get your business set up as your LLC, S Corp or C Corp, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to apply for your EIN number. Your EIN number is your employer identification number and this is what allows you to pay taxes to the federal government. Now your EIN number is beneficial because if you buy your products from Sam's, you can apply for a business card using your EIN number and you won't have to pay taxes off the products that you buy. You won't have to pay them until the end of the year when you write up your taxes for the products that you sold. Now when deciding which insurance company to go with, you're definitely going to want to get a quote. So it's probably recommended to go with about three different insurance companies and see which one gives you the best price and the best offer. I personally have the one two plan which is the one million two million dollar policy and that one works for me and my business if you would like to learn a little bit more about the taxes and insurance side of the vending business i'm going to leave another link right up here check this link out and you'll hear me speaking with a 20-year veteran vendor by the name of ray gravel he breaks down a lot of things about the taxes and insurance side of the vending business as far as a business license every county may be different but the way it works in my county is i go down to the tax certificate office and i pay three dollars per machine for every machine that I have out on a location and that serves as my business certificate or my business license and then once you have all your legality set up the next thing you're gonna to want to do is you're gonna to want to create some kind of format where you can keep track of your costs versus your revenue there are all different types of formats that you can use to keep track of your bookkeeping all right now that we've covered some of the basic startup info let's talk about how to get locations people are always asking me Mike how do you get your locations 
What do you say to the business owners? It's definitely a great idea to get some business cards made. Having a business card that represents your brand goes a long way when introducing yourself to a business owner. To create your own business card at a great price, go check out vistaprint.com. I get 500 cards for less than $10. So the two type of locations that you're gonna find are employee-driven locations and customer-driven locations. Factories and warehouses can be great employee-driven locations. So what I do when I find a warehouse or a factory with a lot of employees in it I'll pull up to the front all right I'm about to go over here and pull up to this warehouse and show y'all how I get into the door of the place or around the back and if I see an employee outside I just pull up and ask him hey buddy do y'all have vending machines in there do y'all have like soda and snack machines in there vending machines well they have vending machines in there okay all right appreciate it Excuse me, buddy. You got a minute? Do you work here? Uh, you work here? Uh, quick question. Do y'all have vending machines in here? Yeah. Like soda machines, snack machines, things like that? Don't have any? Yeah. What's going on, man? Yeah, yeah. All right. Do y'all have, um, like, soda vending machines and snack machines over here? We have one, yeah. Uh oh, you have some already? Yeah. Okay, because I got, I got a vending business. And I'm, uh, you know, I always put around like soda machines, snack machines, things like that. So I check in different places to see. Yeah, if you want to uh, uh, talk to the store manager. Okay, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Is, is he in there? Yeah. All right, yeah. Uh, is it okay if I park here for a minute? Yeah. Okay. Now the smaller mom and pop businesses, I usually approach those a little bit differently. Instead of trying to find an employee to speak with outside, I'll actually walk right into the front door and walk up to the front desk and speak to anybody that I see and try to get in touch with the person who owns the place or the head person who can make the decisions. Once I get to the owner or the decision maker, I explain to them that I am a local vendor and that I provide various types of different vending machines for local businesses. Having a portfolio of the various types of different machines that you offer can really improve your chances of getting a location. I usually just share with them my YouTube channel and I always keep various photos on my phone. But what you can do is you can have a portfolio or you can have a folder or a pamphlet that has all your machines posted on there. Now you may feel unsure of yourself or slightly nervous when you walk into your first location because you may be uncertain of what to say. All you really have to be able to do is to start and hold an everyday average conversation. And the more that you do it, the better you'll get at it. Now that you have pretty much everything that you need set up for your business, you have all your paperwork in place, you've already got your business cards, you've bought your machines, you found your locations, how do you transport your machines to your locations? Just so happens I have multiple videos on this too, explaining the different ways that I personally have moved multiple types of various vending machines. But I'm giving you everything you need to know in this one jam-packed video. So don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below what you think about the vending business and what do you think about this type of video. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to my channel already. And let's go take a look at some of the ways that I've moved vending machines. These machines take up a lot of space if you put them in all together. So I'm going to show you the way I do it, and it allows me to take a lot more than just one or two machines out at a time. I just kind of step right here and wiggle it back and forth. And you see this part right here comes right off of the pole. And I'm just going to place this right back here. We get this last one up in here. These come off the same way. We shake it. All right. And then we just place these in there. That we just place these in here. Now, if you want to transport a full line soda machine or snack machine, it's not going to be as easy, and you will definitely need a pickup truck or a trailer. And you're definitely going to want to have a friend or two to help you out moving it. I've moved full line machines by myself on numerous occasions, but it's just a better idea to get somebody to help you because you don't want to end up hurting yourself because some of these machines are extremely heavy and any mishap can definitely leave you with a bad injury, if not worse. Woo! This is the type of dolly that I used when I transported my first soda vending machine. Okay, to get it up on the dolly, all I had to do was lift it sideways, slide it under, and then lay it back up. Okay, we got the tow truck driver out here. We're getting ready to move this machine. My homie Tim helping us out. ready to 
take it over to the plumbing shop. All right, everyone, hopefully this video was beneficial. If it was, share it with at least one person that you know may need some extra income because sharing is caring. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time I make another video.